Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And then we will Haunted Dad discard two silver smotes. Pass the turd, get back all of our dorks. All right, opponent. Well, our board has been rebuilt. We get back prize and Balgobs. We get back a ton of silver smotes. Opponents at one life. They do get to loot with Jays, but they need something. I don't even know what that something. They need something really, 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 really good to survive this. All right, your go opponent. Untaps at one life. Hello, everyone. It's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Much Abrew About Nothing. And today, we're doing something we haven't done in quite a while. We are playing Pioneer. And I have to say, thanks to the recent bannings, I'm actually super hyped for the format. You might remember there was a time like six months ago where Pioneer was actually my literal favorite format in all of Magic. It was fair, it was fun, it felt like lots of things were possible, but that Theros Beyond Death came out, everything became combo decks, but Wizards fixed the problem this week, banning all the combo decks, so now we're getting to check out Pioneer Dredge, a deck that we did a deck tech of a few weeks ago, but never got a chance to play because Pioneer was just so miserable. So we're going to see if we can silver smell and prize amalgam and Seder Wayfinder, of course, our way through the format. So let's talk about the deck, jump right into a league, see how good Pioneer Dredge is, but also the Pioneer format is in a post-ban world. So our deck, even though there's no Dredge cards in Pioneer, and it might be a little bit wrong to consider this deck Dredge, it bears a lot of similarities. The plan of our deck is to fill our graveyard with stuff, get that stuff out of our graveyard for free mostly and then use that stuff to kill our opponent so step one is filling the graveyard on turn one stitcher supplier mills three more when it dies merfolk secret keeper thanks to its adventure mode can mill four and give us a little chump blocker uh, so these cards start filling our graveyard then on turn two we have Seder wayfinder one of my all-time favorite magic cards letting us snag a land and dump some cards in our graveyard. Grizzly Salvage, kind of the same, can grab a creature or a land, dumps four cards into the graveyard. So these cards just help us stock our graveyard at lightning speed. The big new addition to the deck is a new recursive threat, Silver Smoke Ghoul. So Silver Smoke, for it to come back into play from our graveyard, it needs us to gain three life. So the idea is we'll mill it over with all that stuff we're talking about, gain some life, get it back for free. To go along with Silver Smoke, we have Narc Amoeba, comes into play for free if we mill it. Prize Amalgam comes into play from our graveyard for free if something else comes into play from our graveyard. So if we can get an Arc Amoeba, that's going to bring all of our prized amalgams with it. If we mill over a Silver Smote and some prized amalgams, we gain three life, get back Silver Smote, Silver Smote gets back all of our prized amalgams, and this gives us a really unbeatable late game engine. Uh, we are just able to get back a bunch of stuff from our graveyard each turn, slam into our opponent, sure some of our stuff dies, that's fine, we gain three more life, we get back Silver Smote, that gets back prized amalgams, do it again until our opponent eventually dies. As far as gaining life for Silver Smoke, we have Creeping Chill, which if we mill it over just drains for three, we gain three point, it loses three. So hopefully we will mill this and not have to cast it, but we can cast it in a pinch. So that starts the chain reaction. We hit a Creeping Chill as we bill, which triggers our Silver Smoke Ghouls on our end step. We get back all of our Silver Smoke Ghouls for free, which triggers our prized Abelgums, which gets us back all of our prized Abelgums on our opponent's end step, and suddenly we have this massive board every single turn. The other trick is Uro, which just happens to gain three life and can be escape from the graveyard. So the three life trigger silver smell, escaping from the graveyard counts as something coming to play for the graveyard. So that triggers prized amalgam. Plus our deck fills the graveyard at lightning speed. So we're really good at having the cards we need to keep escaping Uro over and over and over again. And Uro's just a busted magic card. So that's the core of the deck. Otherwise we have a couple driven to despairs, which is mostly in the deck to be milled over with aftermath. Uh, for two mana, we can cast it from our graveyard and until end of turn, all of our creatures get menace. And when they hit our opponent for combat, damage, our opponent discards a card. So we can just get a bunch of random dorks, Narc Amoebas, Silver Smotes, cast this from our graveyard, menace our team, get in a bunch of damage, empty our opponent's hand, make it really hard for our opponent to recover. Mana base wise, yeah, fast lands and shock lands, as simple as can be, zero basic lands, but no blood moons in the format. Sideboard wise, Thought Seize, to pick apart our opponent's hand, Dabbing Sphere for combo decks, Fatal Push for removal, Assassin's Trophy to deal with graveyard hate primarily, which is really good against us, Leyline of the Void in case our opponent has graveyard hate, and that is Pioneer Dredge. That's our bunch of brew deck for this week. Let's jump into a league. See how good this deck is. See how good Pioneer is. See if the format is fixed and fun and amazing again. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. 
Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. All right, much brew about nothing time. Pioneer is new and fresh, and bannings are in, and we are finally getting a chance to uh, try out some Pioneer Pioneer Dredge. I love Seder Wayfinder, so whenever I see a Seder Wayfinder deck, I I just I gotta play it. <laughs> I've been wanting to play this deck for a while, but I was on Pioneer hiatus thanks to the miserable meta. All right, Elvish Mystic. Oh uh, well, Botanical Sanctum. You. I probably should have main phase this actually because of Silver Smoke. Opponent gets an Island Seder. Oh, opponent's also playing Dredge. Seder Wayfinder. Mills. Oh, well, maybe it's not exactly Dredge. Well, we will. Grizzly Salvage. Take Stitcher Supplier. Mill. Creeping Chill, Narc Amoeba, Prize Amalgam. Get a bunch of dorks. Pwn down to 17. Untap. Prize Amalgam returns. Blooming Marsh. Play Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. Creeping Chill. Getcha. Play Grizzly Salvage. Take... Um... Hmm... Hey, let's just take Watery Grave. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Down to 10. Pass the turn. Hinterland Harbor for our opponent. And passes. Well, go to combat. Attack our opponent. And this is the kind of starts we can get off to. Down to 5. Um, Stitcher Supplier? Yeah, opponent. Want to get that Frilled Mystic value. Sure. Now, Watery Grave. Untapped. Silver Smoke Ghoul. Go. And I think we're in pretty good shape here. Fabled Passage. Cracks it. I have no idea what our opponent's playing. Goes to combat. No attacks. Well, we're going to keep attacking. Oh, they're playing the merge deck. All right. Elder Deep Feed. Two lands. Two creatures. Um, okay. Sure. Well, play Blooming Marsh. And pass the turn. I guess if our opponent could get, just keep chaining Deep Fiends, they got a shot. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Oh, we'll block with Stitcher Supplier. Keep filling the graveyard. Uh, mill. Well, okay. Fierce Empath. So I assume this is to get another Deep Fiend. All right, opponent gets another other Deep Fiend. Plays a land, so they can Deep Fiend again. Um, all right. Couple of creatures, couple of lands. Well, we get a Seder Wayfinder, which is not the worst. Seder Wayfinder. Get a Watery Grave. Millinark Amoeba. That's not bad. That triggers Prize Amalgam. Watery Grave. Untapped. Secret Keeper. Venture Deeper. Mill some cards. Creepy Chill. Hit you to two. All right, opponent. Can you stay alive? Opponent's really going to need to keep chaining stuff together. We get back a Prize Amalgam. We get back a Silver Smote. And I think we might actually be in a good spot. Pwn it. Untaps. Fierce Empath is sweet with Elder Deep Fiend. That seems like a, a pretty good addition to an Emerge style deck. Being able to tutor up Deep Fiend and then sack it. Three cards in hand. Potent cracks it. We're at 25, though, and opponent's at two. How can our opponent possibly, possibly stay alive here? Apparently they can't. Scoops it up. All right. So now we have to assume... That our opponent's going to bring in Graveyard Hate. I think we just bring in Assassin's Trophies and go down... What? Maybe we just trim, like, a Secret Keeper, a Narc Amoeba, and a Driven to Despair? Let's try it like that. Yeah, that sound seems good. Stitcher Spire into Seder Wayfinder into something, hopefully. Botanical Zagnum. And Lanowar Elves. Yeah, we draw the Creeping Chill. Well, let's Stitcher Spire. Mail some cards. Nothing super exciting. An Uro could be good at some point. Opponent. Seder Wayfinder. Goose digging. No land. But they do have a land. Oh, no! All right, we're really good at drawing these creeping chills for some reason. Well, Seder Wayfinder. Take Botanical Sanctum. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Ugh, yeah. That is one of the awkward things about this deck, is we do have some cards that are in our deck that we really don't want to draw. And Creeping Chill is top of the list. Uh, Peyotis. Uro. Yeah, sure. Um, no blocks. Ooh, Pony did not find a land? All right, well, play Botanical Sanctum. I think we play 
our own Uro. We would also like to hit a land. We do not. Although Grizzly Salvage could be good next turn. Go to combat. Hit you with Wayfinder. We'll leave back Stitcher Supplier because we're fine with that dying. Opponent down to 21. Who finds the land first? Mm, looks like our opponent. Breeding Pool. And Uro returns. Yeah. Hmm. So if we draw a land, we get to get back Uro, which would be nice. Opponent gets another land. No attacks. Ugh, Narc Amoeba. Well, we will mill ourselves. Get a Narc Amoeba. Oh, we should have done this in response, I think. Yeah, we should have. Well, that's fine. Grizzly Salvage. Get a Breeding Pool. And a Creeping Gel. And uh, the Dorks are officially coming. Get a Breeding Pool. No attacks. Here comes our friends. A prized amalgam. Two silver smotes. Although our opponent does have an Uro going. Uh, about it. And we get another prized amalgam at the end of our opponent's turn. Opponent. Gonna get in with Uro, I assume. Draw a card, gain some life. It's another land. All right, so opponent's had a bunch of lands in a row. Well, we will chump with S Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. Get a Creeping Chill. Hit our opponent to 19. Oh, and where else? Opponent passes. Well, here comes the prize amalgam. I'll go to combat. Uh, attack ya. The dorks are coming. Opponent blocks. Drops to eight. We will secret keeper. We will silver smote. Pass the turn. All right, there's the frilled mystic. So opponent's fighting the fight. Opponent combat gets in with Earl Games life. Wow, and Frilled Mystic. So our opponent's planning on tapping down our board. Goes to 11. Hits us for 9. Wow, they hit another land. All right, so opponents hit all the lands they could possibly need. Fierce Empath to get the Elder Deep Feed. Yeah, opponent might have a chance here. They might have a chance. Seder Wayfinder mills some random cards. Well, we'll see. We untap. Opponent sacks the Empath. Taps some stuff down. Two lands, two creatures. Well, we will cast a Narc Amoeba. Yeah, opponent might have done enough. It seems possible that they've done just enough to uh, to stabilize here. Ooh, and a Questing Beast off the top. Huge attack. Gain some life. We get to block and block. We take a huge beating, but I think our opponent... I think our opponent just drew the exact right cards in a row. Cracks Fabled Passage, gets a Forest, another Land of War, one card in hand, passes. Well, we will try to get back an Uro. If our opponent has another counter in hand, then they manage to uh, pull it off. Now we will escape an Uro. Yeah, Elder Deep Fiend's pretty good. Got a Frilled Mystic? Looks like yes. All right. Wow. All right. Well, on to game three. We are on the play, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll just run it back. Well, all right, we can fill the graveyard. We will keep. Secret Keeper into Seder Wayfinder into Seder Wayfinder. Hope our opponent doesn't have random graveyard hate. That would be disappointing. Well, Botanical Sanctum, Secret Keeper. Be good, Venture Deeper. Give us some love. All right, Uro and nothing. Botanical Sanctum. Nelvish Mystic. We draw Creeping Chill. That's the other thing that went wrong last game, is we were really good at drawing Creeping Chills for no reason. Uh, we will take a Breeding Pool. Mill a Creeping Chill. Pass the turn. Yeah, we really gotta stop drawing Creeping Chills. That is the card in our entire deck that we want to draw the least. <laughs> like, we'd rather draw land every time than more Creeping Chills. Uh, about it. Land. And Foul Emissary. Sure. Gets an Elder Deep Feed. All right. Uh, well, we will Grizzly Salvage. Get a land. Blooming Marsh. Pass the turn. Ugh. Boy, we have not milled well. We have not mi wi milled well at all. Opponent land. Goes to combat. No attacks. Well, here comes Elder Deep Feed. Yeah. So opponent Elder Deep Feed's going to tap everything. We will Haunted Dead. Discard and discard. Get back the Haunted Dead. Opponent gets a 3-2. We draw more lands. So, Breeding Pool and Secret Keeper. Go. Opponent taps. Plays a land. Goes to combat. Gets in. We will take 5. Down to 16. Well, we will despair. There's a Frilled Mystic. 
So we will play a Seder Wayfinder. Wow! Wow, 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 wow! We have exactly the wrong cards on the top of our deck, X100. We've milled half of our deck, and we have not milled any of our dredge stuff. Brady pull untap for our opponent. I assume that means another Elder Deep Feed will be a coming. Well, I'll chump, I guess. Uh, it. Yeah, untaps, Elder Deep Fiends, taps everything. We draw an Archimeba. That would have been a good one to mill. Uh, we will play an Archimeba, get in for one past the turn. Well, hopefully our opponent's about done with their shenanigans now. They've cast a Frilled Mystic, two Elder Deep Feeds. They should be about done with, uh, with their fun here. If they get another... <sighs> okay, opponent goes attacking, uh, attacking. Wow. Whew. Well, opponent untaps. We will exile some lands. Try to cast an Uro. It resolves. We gain some life. We put a Botanical Sanctum into play. We cast a Seder Wayfinder. We mill some cards. They are not helpful at all. We'll play an Overgrown Tomb. We will pass the turn. Opponent Elder Deep Fiend number 20. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, taps a bunch of our stuff. Untaps, goes to combat. Well, we will chump and chump. Take nine, go to two. Land arrives for our opponent passes. Well, let's see what we draw. More lands. Well, we will go to combat. We will get in with Uro. Put Botanical Sanctum into play. We will Uro. Get back another Uro. Keep the new Uro. Go up to eight. Gain some life, draw a card. Put another land into play. Then we will Haunted Dead. Discard two Silver Smoke Girls. Pass the turn. Put it on taps. Do they find Elder Deep Feed number four? Or did we get there eventually through Elder Deep Feed? Wow, we got the GGs. <laughs> Elder Deep Feeds for days and days and days. But Dredge still got there. We managed to grind them out. Wow. We dredged really awkwardly. Where is all the where's all of our prize? Oh, well, wait, there's one. Seder Wayfinder. Silver Smell. Prize Amalgam. They're all oh, there they all are. <laughs> all the stuff we wanted to get in our graveyard was hanging out at the bottom of our deck, and our opponent hit uh, Double Foul Emissary hitting Elder Deep Feeds, which was, whoo, frighteningly, frighteningly impressive. Wow, that was close. Well, Dredge got there at the end somehow. Hoi! Sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are dredging in Pioneer. It actually is pretty sweet to be able to play Pioneer again. It has been a minute since we played Pioneer, and I've been wanting to play this. I mean, it's got Seder Wayfinder. Of course I've been wanting to play this deck, but I've been wanting to play this deck for a while, so I'm glad we are finally, finally getting a chance. Uh, yeah, sounds fine. I mean, we have Graveyard Filling, Graveyard Filling, Uro, meh. Really good at drawing Creeping Chills. Uh-oh. Is this Wilderness Wreck? Boo. It could just be salt time mid-range. Whenever I see these land colors, I just, I immediately become afraid that it's a wilderness wreck deck. Well, Secret Keeper. Venture deeper. Four cards into our library. Uh, nothing of relevance. Go. Uh, boot it. Rootbound Crag. Oh, it really is. Sylvan Carry added. Interesting. All right. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's probably, probably Niv. We draw Hunted Dead. Well, Botanical Sanctum and Seder Wayfinder. Get a blue... Get a Watery Grave. Pass the turn. Still nothing of relevance milled, unfortunately. I guess Uro's sort of relevant, but no dredge stuff. Nothing that comes back into play for free. Stomping grounds for our opponent and passes. Heh, <laughs> heh, I'm glad. I'm glad you, uh are going in our hand instead of into our graveyard and into play for free. Well, Uro. Uh, Watery Grave. Untapped. And Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. Still nothing relevant. Ouch. All right, well, pass the turn. 
So we've milled a lot of cards, but none of them actually come back from the graveyard. If we draw a Creeping Chill this turn, <laughs> this deck can be pretty frustrating. About it. Planes. Well, here comes a Niv, probably. Ah, Nahiri, alright. Loots with Nahiri. Well, that's not great for us. Opponent's still at 20, which is concerning. I guess the good news is, since we haven't milled anything relevant so far, that means we got a lot of relevant things to mill in our deck. Unfortunately, that also means we got a lot of stuff we want to be milling that we will probably end up drawing, which is a little less exciting. Ooh, Grizzly Salvage. Hmm. Ugh. Well, it is hard to pass up an Uro here. I think we just got a Uro. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, get back in a row, draw a card, gain some life, get a 6-6. Six, six. I mean, I guess that's one of the upsides of this deck is... Oh, no, we did draw another Creepy Chill. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, Creepy Chill number two it had. <laughs> oh, this deck. Oh, oh. Wow. There's so much that's just about the luck of the order that your cards show up. Like, we could have milled all those Creeping Chills and it would have been awesome, but instead, we keep drawing them, and that is decidedly not awesome. Land for our opponent. Eventually, they are going to find a Niv and draw a ton of cards. Kills a Ruru. Opponent passes. Well, we will play a Seder Wayfinder. Mill some cards. Still nothing helpful. Get a breeding pool. Play a breeding pool. Untapped. Uro. Again. Get back Uro. Draw. Please not creeping chill. Please not creeping chill. Silver smoke. Well, it's not quite creeping chill. So we will we will accept that. <laughs> Apparently all of our uh, all of our prized amalgams and most of our narc amoebas are hanging out in the bottom of our library here. Well, Hit Nahiri down to six. We do want to keep Nahiri from ultimating, because if Nahiri ultimates, then it gets to get a... All right, opponent gets to kill Uro again. Then it gets to get a Niv, and that draws our opponent like 100 cards. Opponent. Also getting a little concerned that with how this has played out that we could end up milling out. Lose with Nahiri again. Discards our devastation. Opponent. Passing. Hmm. We'll go to combat. Attack Nahiri. We are not being able to damage our opponent at all. Everything in Nahiri. Opponent blocks. Nahiri down to six. Now we will... Grizzly Salvage. Ah, there's our prized amalgams. Get an Overgrown Tomb. Overgrown Tomb untapped. Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. Uro. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uro. Oh, this is a good one. So this Uro, we finally found our dredge stuff. This Uro gets back three prized amalgams and a silver smelt ghoul. Uh, ghoul. Yeah. Okay. Well, your go, opponent. We finally did a thing. Hopefully our opponent does not have a wrath. That would be disappointing. So that Earl was tw uh, almost 20 power? Was it literally 20 power? 12, 18 power. <laughs> this is what we want to be doing on like turn four though. Not on turn six. <laughs> well, all right, we got a big board. What do you got opponent? Gets rid of Uro again. Do they have a Wrath? Okay, it's a Niv. Well, let's see what our opponent hits. Gets Bring to Light to Fairy. And enter the God Eternals. Well, that might save our opponent. We untap. We go to combat. We send everything at our opponent. Hmm. Is it worth trying to kill Nahiri? Maybe it is. Let's see. Nahiri, 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 Nahiri. Send the rest at our opponent. Nahiri is picking off our stuff. The concern is we're down to 19 cards. And as our Stitcher suppliers die, it'll be even more. All right. So we kill a bunch of stuff. We play a Haunted Dead. We play a 
Merfolk's Secret Keeper. Watery Grave. Tapped. Pass the turn. All right. Well, see if our opponent Raz. 19 cards in our deck. Ugh, we got to not mill out. Opponent plays a land. I guess I can Teferi and Wrath at instant speed, which is a little bit more annoying. Actually, quite a bit more annoying. Although, we do get to rebuild our board pretty well. Yeah, I think there's a decent chance we end up getting milled out here. It just took us so long to get our engine going. Like, you can see the power once we get going, but we just milled the cards in the wrong order. Opponent. Bring Delight. Unmorty. Unmorty ego. Uh, okay. I was not expecting that. Even a little. Going to get rid of our Uros. Huh. That is a strange, strange choice. So opponent has to fairy enter the God Eternals in one unknown card. Uros are down. All right, opponent. What do you got? Well, okay, the unknown card was a Dreadbore. Sure. Well, we know the hand. And I think we might be able to beat the hand. Opponent. Passes. We draw. Prize to Melgum. Well, go to combat. Everything at our opponent. Opponent blocks. And blocks. Um, we will sack silver smoke, draw a card, creeping chill, hit you to nine, blooming marsh, get back our board. Oh, I guess that, we, that was a little slight mistake with the tapping. We should have left up to black source in case our opponent does top deck a wrath. So our prize to Malgubs will be returning on the end step. Opponent, looks like it's the enter the god eternal. So opponent's going to go back up to 13 and get a four, four. Kills a haunted dead. Yeah. Well, all right, Narcomoeba Creeping Chill. Drain ya. Down to 10. Okay, opponent. Eh, runs out to Teferi, sure. Is this lethal though? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's like not quite lethal. Opponent's gonna block Silver Smoke. Yeah, we definitely should have left up Black Mana. Plays a land, opponent. Passes. Well, we get back two prized amalgams. Untap. Go to combat. Uh, Teferi, Teferi, Teferi. Opponent, 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 opponent. We don't want to deal with an instant speed wrath. Opponent blocks. And blocks. Teferi dies. Opponent goes to eight. How can we play around a wrath most effectively? Now, let's play a silver smoke ghoul. Play a narc amoeba. Pass the turn. All right, opponent needs a a pretty good top deck. Two cards it had. Opponent. Well, Bring Delight is a pretty good top deck. That's actually probably our opponent. That's any card in our opponent's deck. So that is that is probably their best top deck. They get an Uro to gain some life. Yeah. Up to 11. Puts a land into play. Gets back, Uro goes to 14. Are we going to end up short of winning again? Oh, that would be so depressing. So opponent goes to 14. They have three blockers. They're tapped out, though. All right, so opponent's up to 14. Second main phase. We just got to go for it. We get to Haunted Dead. Discard, discard. Trigger our prized amalgams. And then we Haunted Dead. Discard, discard. Get another prized amalgam. Well, is it lethal? That is the question. We untap. We get a million prized amalgams. Is it enough to win us this game? We untap. We draw. Ooh, that's actually really good. Go to combat. Normally, we don't want to draw Creeping Chill, but this is an exception. Attack with everything. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Actually, I think this is lethal anyway. Ho! Ho, 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 All right, button blocks and blocks and blocks. And eyes. Through the Niv and the Nahiri. We managed to dredge him out somehow. That was actually a, a pretty sweet performance. Again, it was not like a crazy nut draw. It was more of like a, a very grindy late game. Very grindy late game draw, but it's working. We are dredging our way through Pioneer. The question's going to be, how do we sideboard? Like, what graveyard hate do we have to worry about? I have no idea. Hmm. Maybe we just thought sees? Driven Despair seems insane. If we can just empty our opponent's hand. 
maybe it's not even worth thought seizing. They probably have like Kunaros? Fatal push. I mean, we could just bring an Assassin's Trophy to be safe. That's always a, that's always a safe bet. Just trim and bring in a couple Assassin's Trophies. Yeah, all right, let's, let's try it like that. I feel like this deck should have the possibility of getting a, a pretty crazy nut draw. I mean, by Pioneer standards, where you end up with, like, two prized amalgams and an Archimeber or something on turn two. Like, even that should be good against a lot of decks. Oh, well, we can't keep this. There's our Driven to Despair, but no lands, no keep. Well, all right. I guess this we keep and just put a Creeping Chill to the bottom? Opponent's going to five. This hand is fine. Pretty fair looking. All right, opponent. What you got? Tap land. Passes. <laughs> Narcomoeba. Well, over and Tomb go. One to mind of the Narcomoeba being a, a little bit further in our library, but that's all right. That's all right. Secret Keeper. Well, play the land. And let's just grizzly salvage. Jeez. All right. A bunch of lands, but we do mill an Uro. Untap. Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. I'll play Botanical Sanctum. Venture Deeper. Mill some cards. Bunch more lands. Um, jeez. All right, Narcomoeba. Go. Awkward. <laughs> We've milled like 10 cards and it's all lands, one Uro, and an Assassin's Trophy. Very strange. Opponent, untap land. And Nahiri is pretty obnoxious. There's Nahiri. We would love to draw land. Ooh, does not loot. So opponent's hand is good. Well, hmm. This is not great. I guess we Uro draw a card. Oh, creeping chill. <laughs> I will say this deck's a little frustrating because obviously milling yourself is random, but boy is it <laughs> tilting when you mill lands you need and then draw a bunch of like creeping chills and archimibas. You you gotta like convince your brain that it's random because it is random. So you gotta remind yourself that next time in theory you will you will have the opposite happen. Opponent going to eat all of our Uros, I presume. Definitely not good for us. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Well, there goes Uro. If it wasn't for this Nahiri being able to get a Niv, I wouldn't care as much. I don't go to combat. Attack Nahiri. Play a pretty sad prized amalgam. Pass the turn. Oh, look at all those lands that we could have used. Uh, opponent. Loot with Nahiri. Discards a Dreadbore. And Utter End. Yeah. We draw. Hey! It's finally land. So we will, I guess, play this Haunted Dead. Go to combat. Hit Nahiri. Again. Pass the turn. Yeah, those uh, ability of our opponent's deck to get rid of all of our Uros with, like, Unmoored Ego is not great. Opponent. Loots with Nahiri. Discards a land. Oh, you really need to kill this before... Before a Niv comes. Opponent. Oh, enter the God Eternals. Mills themselves. Passes. Play a Seder Wayfinder. Get a land that's tapped. Secret Keeper. Hmm, nothing good. Cast a Secret Keeper. Play a Blooming Marsh. Hit Nahiri. Pass the turn. Ooh, this Nahiri's getting so close. Pwn it, land. Uh-oh, that's not a great sign. Cracks it. Island. Oh, it's an Uro. All right. So opponent gets to go Uroing. Uro draws a card. Can immediately get it back. Yeah, Unmoored Ego is really good. Opponent. Uros again. Opponent. Loots with Nahiri. Gets in. Um, okay. We untap. We draw a Narcomoeba. Go to combat. Hit Nahiri. Creeping chill. Get back till two silver smodes. Pass the turn. But our opponent's going to town with Uro. Definitely not feeling good about where we're at at the moment. Phone it. 
takes down Nahiri to get rid of a silver smelt. Goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. Yeah, that unmoored ego is brutal. Ugh, we're gonna lose on the mold of five? That's depressing. Well, yeah. I guess we also had a horrible hand in Mulligan, down to 12. Seems like this should be a pretty good matchup. Cards like Dreadbore and just all of our opponent's random removal is not very effective, but losing our Uros is pretty painful. Scarab got out of the sideboard, and uh, yeah, we'll scoop it up. Hmm. All right. Well, that was interesting. One of these days, I swear, one of these games, we're actually just going to have a legitimate nut draw with this deck, and it's going to be sweet. It will happen. I can, uh, I promise you. Well, hopefully. Sooner or later, it will happen, though. Like, it's, uh, it's not very likely that we just never have a really good hand win the deck, and we always have these, like, turn 10 hands. Now, this would be great if we had two lands. Like, the dream hand if we had one more land, but we do not. Um, this is absolutely horrible. Well, okay. This is fine. We will keep. We will put a Snark Amoeba and Assassin's Trophy to the bottom. And let the graveyard filling begin. Maybe this is finally our nut draw hand. Venture Deeper. Yes, okay. Creepy Chill. Hit ya. Silver Smoke Ghoul returns. Okay, that's a good turn one. That's a good turn one. That's... Not a nut draw, but it's pretty good. That's a good start. That's what the deck can do. Boom. 3-1 on turn one. Look out, Pioneer World. Tap land for our opponent. Passes. Watery Grave. Untapped. Grizzly Selfage. Take a Seder Wayfinder. Go to combat. Hit ya. Down to 14, opponent. This is a pretty fast start. Woodland Cemetery. And. Wow, Dreadboard Silver Smoke. Sure. We untap. We will Grizzly Salvage. Take a Stitcher Supplier. Get a Narc Amoeba, which will get a prize to Malgum. Watery Grave untapped. Stitcher Supplier. Pass the turn. All right. There's the prize to Malgum. Opponent. Tap Lad. Passing. Untap Resource. Haunted Dead. Well, go to combat. Attack ya. Hit ya. Down to nine. Stitcher Supplier, mill some cards, Seder Wayfinder, get a Breeding Pool, Creeping Chill You, down to six, Tap Lad, Silver Smotes, so Porn needs a Wrath just to survive the turn, oh man, that's the nut draw, that's what we were saying would happen eventually, that is a side of what the deck could do, does our opponent have like an Anger of the Gods or something? Opponent passing. Prized Amalgam's returning. What does our opponent have? And opponent scoops it up! Oh, nib about, nib about! The power of Pioneer Dredge. That was finally what I was envisioning with this deck. That was, that was exactly what I imagined when I was so excited to play this deck, is games like that, where we just cast a bunch of Grizzly Salvages and Seder Wayfinders, and we have this massive recursive board by turn five. That was, that was what I was hoping for. That was exactly it. Whew. All right, that was finally, finally the kind of game we were dreaming about. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are dredging in Pioneer, and I actually don't think we keep this. We have, like, one mill card and four cards that we don't want in our hand that we want to be milling. Uh, well, okay. This isn't a ton better but it is a little better all right to the bottom well Seder wayfinder power <laughs> in Seder wayfinder we trust we might finally get to see driven uh despair in action draw a card with our Seder wayfinder as if Seder wayfinder need to be even more busted <laughs> uh, see what our opponent's up to oh uh, opponent swamp all right mono black uh, Botanical Sanctum, and let's Seder Wayfinder into an Uro, maybe? That would be good against our opponent's deck. Well, we hit a Creeping Chill, so a bit of life gain. That's something. Pass the turn. And Silver Smell's not the worst, because at least we can cast it. So for our opponent, Knight of the Eben Legion, and Fatal Bush. All right. Well, take our beats. Down to 23. 
Hey, more lands is not ideal. Uh oh. Well, we kept a really land heavy hand, and we have uh, continued to draw lands mostly. Mute of alt. Opponent goes to combat. Gets and hits us. Yeah, all right. I guess we're dying. Yeah, grows and I. Well, there's an Uro finally. That's convenient timing. Uro, draw a card, gain some life. Please, not more lands. Ooh, Stitcher Supplier's good. Watery Grave untapped. Stitcher Supplier mills some cards. Play the land. Go to combat. Get in with Silver Smote. Okay, that Uro does change things. Uro coming back is a huge deal here. Opponent has a lock, Wayne. Fires up Muta Vault. And Thought Seizes. Yup. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us, hits us. And yeah, we'll take four. Down to 12. We untap. Opponent gets to grow their Knight of the Eben Legion. Well, right, we get to Uro. Green, green, blue, blue. One, two, three, four, five. Draw a card, gain some life. Um, yeah, put a land into play. Tapped. Stitcher Supplier. Well, all right, get an Arc Amoeba. And, yeah, get it with Silver Smoke, because it's going to come back into play anyway. Pona takes it. Down to nine. And now he might actually be in good shape. Pona plays a land. Ooh, okay. Kills Uro, but this puts our opponent to seven. Attacks. Oh, well, this is fine. Now we get to block with a Stitcher Supplier, which fills our graveyard so we can get back Uro. Yeah. Still at 15. And a Pona scoops it up. Mono Black, no match for the Dredgig. Well, okay. So that's awesome. That was good. That was very good. The scary part is Leyline of the Void. <laughs> we'll bring in our Assassin's Trophies. Hope to dodge Leyline of the Void or be able to kill it. I feel like our Fury value can beat Mono Black, but their Leyline of the Void can beat us. All right. Actually, very much like this hand, except for the fact that we lose to Leyline of the Void. But if our opponent does not have Leyline of the Void, this hand is excellent. It is basically exactly what we want. Well, there's Leyline of the Void. Okay. So that's worse. Huh. All right. Uh, well. Watery Grave tapped. So now we are... Hmm. Hoping to draw those Assassin's Trophies. Mew to Vault. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us down to 18. Well, we will cast a Seeker Keeper. <laughs> it is a good blocker. Breeding Pool tapped. Opponent untaps. Castle Lockwain. Scrappy Scrounger. Yes. That is what we needed. Uh, so we will. Assassin's Trophy Lane Line of the Void. That was a great draw. <laughs> we could not have asked for a better draw than that. Overgrow Tuba tapped. Stitcher Supplier. Start the party. Mill a Creeping Chill. And an Assassin's Trophy, but that's all right. We answered the ley line. Hopefully there's not another one past the turn. Now we can start Grizzly Salvaging and filling our graveyard and winning, hopefully. No. Okay, Rankle. Rankle's okay. We Rankle's fine. Pony goes combat. Hits us. See what they choose. Discards a card. Draw, uh, draws a card, loses life. Sure. We'll discard Silver Smoke and draw Haunted Dead. Well, we untap. Play Grizzly Salvage. Ugh, that's awkward. Blooming Marsh. Play the Blooming Marsh past the turn. Yeah, it would have been nice to hit an untap land there, but that's still okay-ish. Opponent, Mutavault. Finds another ley line of the void. Fires up Mutavault. Attacks with everything. Three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Oh, that ley line of the void was an insane draw for our opponent. Wow. <laughs> All right. So our opponent, we'll see. That was a really, really, really like 10 out of 10 draw for our opponent. Uh, we will discard Seder Wayfinder. Draw Grizzly Salvage. A little less appealing with this ley line out. Uro. Well, Uro. Actually, that might be wrong. I think we actually start with Haunted Dead. I think we want to make sure we have bodies on the battlefield for this rankle. Because we're probably only going to get one shot with Uro because our opponent drew that second ley line. Ugh, yeah, that was, uh, that was brutal. Opponent. Kalitas. Opponent's drawing graveyard hate. Four days. 
Gets in with Wrangle. Well, we will chump. Oh! Wow! Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh. All right. And, uh, yeah, that does it. Wow, those were three, uh, demonic tutor top tags for our mono black aggro opponent. All right. Well, I mean, we had the answer to the ley line, but good God, were those uh, some really good draws. All right. Run it back, run it back. So we know our opponent's going to mulligan until they find a ley line, because they think that's their only chance of winning, and it probably is. So we need to really value Assassin's Trophy, and we also have to hope that what happened there didn't happen. We actually drew the answer to the ley line, but wow, were those some top decks. Leyline number two into Kalitas into the agonizing remorse to get rid of our Uro. Those were those were absurd top decks for our opponent. Well, all right, no Leyline, please. Opponent Mulligans. I mean, in a world of London Mulligans, our opponent's close to 100% to hit a Leyline. Down to five. I mean, depending on how aggressive they go, so opponent keeps it five, but no Leyline. Well, we will watery grave and start the milling. Venture deeper. Pass the turn. Prize Amalgam and nothing. Some for a moment. Thought sees. Takes a Grizzly Salvage. Uh, well, we will play Botanical Sanctum and run out a Secret Keeper. Well, now we need to find ways to fill the graveyard. Pass the turn. Some for our opponent and passes. Uh, more lands. More lands are not good. I don't play Silver Smoke. Pass the turn. Uh, booted. Mute Vault. And passes. Wow! Another land in a row. Well, hit ya. So I assume our opponent has Kalitas coming down next turn. Opponent takes it. Breeding pool untapped. Haunted dead. Oh, we've drawn lands every turn in a row. Oh, the comedy of errors. Pass the turn. There's the land. There's the Kalitas. Ooh, spawn of mayhem. Okay. Not a Kalitas, so that's good. And there's finally a way to fill the graveyard. Grizzly salvage. Take, nah, I guess we take Silver Smote. Take Silver Smote. Milnar Amoeba. Get back two prized amalgams. Go to combat. Attack our opponent, attack our opponent. Well, we will sack Silver Smote, draw a card. Breeding Pool, untapped. Secret Keeper, Venture Deeper. Narc Amoeba. An opponent scoops it up. Oh, dodging the ley lines and getting the job done. And the kids are already eating. Maybe Pioneer Dredge is good. <laughs> that is three in a row. Yeah, all right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Also, we played three different decks, and none of them have been degenerate turn four combo decks. So Pioneer looking fixed, which is probably even more important than uh, Seder Wayfinder being good. Sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are still dredging, and yeah, all right. We got a couple of cards that we don't want, but we have a lot of self mills, so good enough. Watery grave and venture deeper into our library. Eh, all right. We hit a silver smoke, but that's it so far. Uh, opponent, blooming marsh, and thought seize. All right, so that could take one of our self mill cards. Uh, all right. Take Seeker Keeper, sure. Well, let's Stitcher Supplier mill some cards. Ew, nothing. That was a that was a stone whiff of a mill. <laughs> Three lands. Alright. Ugh, boot it. So we mostly want more graveyard fillers at this point. I guess Uro would probably be okay. Overgrow Doom. Untapped. But we're uh, we're getting to the hardcast Narc Amoeba point. Ooh. Opponent is also wayfinding. Shark Typhoon Eliminate Jace. All right, so opponent's just uh, the Salti, Salti Delirium, which I actually think might be a tricky matchup for us because they probably or potentially have Scavenging Use in their main deck. Hmm. All right, well, um, I guess we attack with Stitcher Supplier. Play a Narc Amoeba. <laughs> This deck's pretty funny. When it's good, it's so good. And then when you uh when you mill awkwardly, it's so clunky. <laughs> I mean we've been winning with it so far though, so it, it's been working, but boy, there's some some games like this where you just mill nothing and cast narc amoebas and have creeping chills in hand. Those games make you want to cry a bit. 
opponent. Seder Wayfinder number two gets another land, mills a bunch more cards. Well, next turn we can hard cast Creeping Jill just to get Silver Smoke back. Not explosive, but better than nothing. And then we can sack Silver Smoke to draw cards. Eve to Extinction is worth being aware of. That is, uh, wow, shocks themselves. Uh, opponent. No attack. Ooh, that's in a row. Well, go to combat. Attack, attack. Opponent takes it down to 11. Why did they shock? Do they have, like, mystical dispute? Well, play Uro. This is good. This still gets back our Silver Smoke, too. And a Grizzly Salvage. All right, things are coming together. So now Silver Smoke returns. Pass the turn. Wow, opponent just... Hmm. Why did they shock? Well, we'll take it. Those two points of damage could end up mattering. Oh, uh, opponent. Mastermind's Tome. Okay. And an island. And passes. Well, go to combat. Attack ya. Opponent blocks. Um, get back. Well, hopefully get back a row. One, two, three, four, five. So Uro gains us some life, gets back Silver Smote, and yeah, pass the turn. Opponent needs a Wrath, I guess. Opponent gets two draw card. Untaps. Yeah, opponent needs a Sweeper. And even if they hit a Sweeper, they're getting close to Creeping Chill range. And we can go Turbo Graveyard filling next turn if we want need to. Uh, opponent. Well, as much as we were talking about the awkwardness of draws, I guess this also shows how the deck can go from doing nothing to uh, to doing a ton in just like one or two turns. That's the power of all this stuff that comes back from the graveyard for free. Uh, opponent. Traverse, okay. Can it get anything relevant? I'm sure I can get like Uro and gain some life. All right, opponent goes with Uro. So, I mean, that's fine. I guess if they can, like, Uro and Fatal push our Uro, that might buy them a bit. So, there's the Uro. Vona up to 12, draws a card. All right, so it looks like they do have Fatal push. Or maybe our opponent just really likes shocking themselves. They forgot that they're not playing Death Shadow. <laughs> We're playing Pioneer. All right, so opponent kills our Uro. I'll go to combat. Attack ya. Opponent blocks. Well, we will... Grizzly Salvage. Take a Overgrown Tomb. Get a Narc Amoeba. Overgrown Tomb untapped. Get back Uro. Get back Silver Smoke. The threats just keep coming. One, two, three, four, and five. So Uro returns. Draw card in life. Man, Uro's so good. Uro's just insane. Ooh, another Grizzly Salvage, too. All right, well, the board is rebuilt. We pass the turn. Silver Smoke comes back. Opponent can get back their Uro, but is that even going to be enough here? Opponent scries. Master My Dome's pretty good. Uh, opponent. I think this is one of the more underrated cards from Corset 2021. Uro? So, opponent, I think they're Uroing, but trying to figure out how not to turn off Delirium. Yeah. All right, so there's Uro. Opponent goes to 11, draws a card. Do they have anything else to go with it, though? No land. Opponent Thought Seizes. Down to nine. Takes the Grizzly Salvage. I think this means our opponent has to chump block our Uro, though. Ooh, and we draw another one. All right, go to combat. Swing with everything. Ooh, opponent found Eliminate. Interesting. All right, well, we still swing with everything. About it. Block Silver Smoke goes to six. Well, we get to Seder Wayfinder. Get a Botanical Sanctum. Creeping Chill. Oh, that should do it. That should do it. Creepy Chill, down to three. Creepy Chill, down to zero. And the creep, <laughs> the creep comes through. Okay, that was a little close with the Uro, but who? the problem is I'm scared because I assume our opponent's going to have graveyard hate. So we're going to have to try to fight through that in game two. But that went well. Assassin's Trophy's in. Go down driven to despair go down driven to despair and maybe one silver smelt run it like that can we dodge the graveyard hate um well we have answers to graveyard hate which is good now yeah, we'll keep this over into him untapped and thought sees takes the Seder wayfinder well that does slow us down because we don't have black man at the moment 
Alright. Well, Sanctum Go. We were counting on this to get black mana, so then we could Grizzly Salvage. Breeding Pool. Tapped. Opponent by Asin. Well, play Botanical Sanctum, and... Man, yeah, let's just venture deeper. Well, Narcomoeba Prized Amalgam. That's not the worst. So Narcomoeba for free. Gets back a Prized Amalgam. Play the Secret Keeper. And not a bad, not a bad venture deeper. <laughs> and we didn't mill a land, which is good, because we still need to draw land. All right, opponent. What do you got? Breeding pool. Untapped. I don't go to combat. Attack. Okay, opponent makes a shark. Sure. That is acceptable. Blocks an Archimeba. Watery Grave, untapped. Grizzly Salvage. Get a... Eh, Seder Wayfinder. Pass the turn. We could have taken a land, but in theory, Seder Wayfinder hopefully finds us a land. Swamp Fire Bonnet. And... To Fairy, okay. I'm gonna start the Lootening. Discards a land. Well, we will Seder Wayfinder. I'll mill a bunch of cards. Creeping Chill. Hit ya. Breeding Pool untapped. Go to combat. I think we just attack our opponent. Yeah, I mean, to Fairy away, my friend. To Fairy away. Opponent takes it. Down to five. And then I think we're gonna just Assassin's Trophy to Fairy. Yeah, opponent loots. Kill to Fairy. Pass the turn. So opponent's at a virtual one right now? Opponent untaps. Well, they did get to loot twice, so maybe they found something. Place a Triome. Ishkana. All right. Oh, and they actually have the card types. Huh, well, we will get back a Uro. Draw a card, gain some life. Put a Blooming Marsh into play. Pass the turn. Well, this kind of gives our opponent blockers to not immediately die. How many Creeping Chills do we have? Do we still have three? Okay, Liliana. Not super effective here. Gonna kill a Wayfinder. Yeah. And Grimflea. And Breeding Pool. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. One card in hand. Opponent. Passes. I don't go to combat. Tag our opponent. Draw a card. No land. I mean, our opponent's got a chump or block. Opponent. Blocks with Ishkana. And Grim Flare. Well, we'll just kill Grim Flare. We don't really want our opponent to uh, get back Ishkana. So opponent stays at five. We will Grizzly Salvage. Take a... Uh, blue, blue, green, green. Take in Overgrown Tomb. Overgrown Tomb. Untapped. Get back Uro. Man, Uro's so good. I mean, not that that's a surprise, but one, two, three, four, five. Uro returns again. We draw a card, gain some life. No land. That's fine. I'll pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Draws a guard. We're nowhere near dying to, uh, to Ishkana. Takes up on Prized Amalgam. Plays a tap land. Last card is... Uh-oh. It's a lot of mana. Whoa! Emrakul the Promised End! Okay. Well, that was a great last card for our opponent. So opponent gets to steal our turn. We'll see what they can do with it. Our opponent's problem is... Eventually, we are going to mill those Creeping Chills. Like, they can attack. They can wipe out our board. But sooner or later, those Creeping Chills are going to come. And we're at a high enough life total that we don't just immediately die to Emrakul. And remember, we get a turn after this Emrakul turn. So opponent's going to try to figure out if... I don't even know they, if they can do much, honestly, with our turn. Like, cast stuff for us? Sure, thank you. Thank you, Uro. So we draw a card and gain some life. We appreciate that. Okay, they're getting us to sacrifice the Uros. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Puts the land into play. Ooh, untapped. Oh, the humanity. The humanity. <laughs> to life. Oh, bonus. Assassin's Trophy, a land, so we can't target their Lillian. Okay. So I guess that's a, a slight win. And then they can, like, attack with Prized Amalgam if they want and eat our stuff. 
Gets in, gets in. Sure. Well, come on, creeping chills to close out this game. Opponent blocks. Opponent blocks. Our stuff dies. Well, we draw Grizzly Salvage, which is pretty good. So we will Grizzly Salvage. Um, we will take Stitcher Supplier. We will play Stitcher Supplier Mill some cards. Wow, we're not going to find those Creeping Chills, are we? Uh, blue, green, blue, green. We will get back in Uro. So Uro comes back. Gain some life, draw a card. That'll get prized Amalgub. It'll also get our Silver Smote. Blooming Marsh into play. All right, well... Pass the turn. Get more dorks back. Uh, opponent. Uh-oh. Sa okay, Seder Wayfinder. Well, I guess if my opponent hits an Uro, that's bad news. No Uro. All right, that's fine. Mill some cards. Plays a Fabled Passage. Cracks a Fabled Passage. I mean, we have three Creeping Chills out of 50 cards. We have a Stitcher Supplier. Opponent takes down Mills, did not hit an Uro, thankfully. Sling it back. Jace or Grim Flare? Goes with Jace. Plays the Jace. Okay. Uh, boot it. Are they getting in with the Emerkel? Yes. Okay, so opponent gets in, hits us for th uh, or not. Opponent passes. Narc Amoeba. Well, let's lead on Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. One creeping chill. Go to combat. Attack with everything at our opponent. Draw a card, gain some life. It's a blooming marsh. Not a creeping chill. Opponent blocks the arrow. Blocks surprised amalgam. Blocks silver smote. Goes to one. Well, we will Uro. Blue, blue, green, green. Gain some life, draw a card. Trigger some prized amalgams. Yup. And then we will Haunted Dead. Discard two Silver Smotes. Pass the turd. Get back all of our dorks. All right, opponent. Well, our board has been rebuilt. We get back Prize and Balgubs. We get back a ton of Silver Smotes. Opponents at one life. They're going to need a spectacular draw. They do get to loot with Jace, but they need something. I don't even know. What that something, they need something really, 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 really good to survive this. All right, your go opponent. Untaps at one life. Boy, I wish we could hit that creepy chill. We got two at our bottom eight. Opponent, loose with Jace, flips Jace. Jace, what's it gonna do? Ooh, they top deck traverse for their turn. That's good. Gets a Uro to gain some life. Yeah, Uro gains life. Draws a card. Opponent. Kills a Silver Smelt. Jace for Fatal Push. Fatal Push is prized Amalga. Not the Uro. Alright, Uro returns. Pota goes up to seven. Draws a card. And so opponent is what? One, two, three, four, five, six blockers. We draw land. We'll go to combat. Attack with everything at our opponent. Uro triggers. We draw a creeping chill. Huh, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I don't think this is going to be lethal still. Opponent blocks. 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 And blocks. Oh, wait. <gasps> what does the spider do? Oh, it's going to block the haunted dead. All right. So opponent goes to five. A bunch of stuff dies. We Uro to get all of our stuff back. Uh, we'll keep the new untapped Uro. Triggers prize amalgams and silver smotes. Put a land into play. Play a narc amoeba. Pass the turd. Get our dorks. Wow. It's still not a guarantee that we win this. Put it. Untaps. Everything returns. The problem is if our opponent can actually, like, wrath or kill both of our stitcher suppliers, because of how these... Creeping Chills played, we would actually mill out. Kills a Silver Smote. Well, better than a Stitcher Supplier. Takes up Jace on a Haunted Dead. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Gains some life, draws a card. Sure. We will let it go. We drop to 39. Now opponent's back up to four cards in hand. An eight life. Another Uro. So up to 11 life. Wow. 
Our opponent might actually be surviving this. This is going to put our opponent back up to 14. Boy, we had a lot of turns where if we could just draw... If we could have just hit those creeping chills, it was game over, but we did not. And now I'm not sure we can win since our opponents gained so much life with Uros. On the other hand, our opponent's been playing incredibly slow. I mean, they haven't played that slowly. They've kept up a reasonable pace, but they are running out of time rapidly. So I think we have a decent chance that we'll win this match to time. Just from our opponent playing uh, not nearly quickly enough. Opponent. Mails a bunch of cards. Plays a land. Passes. Well, there's those creeping chills that we needed at the very bottom. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two. So, when it blocks, 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 we get in for one, two, three. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that is going to do it. And then our opponent can kill Stitcher's Supplier and we die? Well, we will play a Haunted Dead. Play a Narc Amoeba. Play a Narc Amoeba. Pass the turn. Yeah, we can't really attack. We'll pass the turn. I think we're going to get milled out. Uh, boot it. Cash is in Jace for yeah, Henny's expertise, which will definitely mill us out. Yeah, so our cards were just not in quite the right order. We did not see much graveyard hate. All right, sure. So we end up... End up getting milled out by our own Stitcher suppliers. We needed uh, we needed those creeping chills in a different place in our deck. That was that was a big issue there. Um, well, all right, run it back, run it back. I mean, we could bring a graveyard. Hey, I don't really think I want to. Our opponent can answer it, and because of the pace of the game, our opponent not only needs to win, they need to win pretty quickly. Which, I'm not sure if their deck is designed to do. I guess maybe that's an argument for bringing in Leyline. Just to, uh, to slow the game down and keep them from, like, janking us out with a quick Emrakul or something. I would still rather just win straight up, though. But, at the same time, time is part of the game. I never try to win or, like, manipulate the clock. I think that's unsporting and unfair. But, I mean, if you play slowly and lose the time, that's on you. Although it hasn't, like, really felt like our opponent played especially slowly. I guess it must just be, like, taking time on thought seeds decisions and stuff. But somehow, they've played at, like, half the rate that we have. They're, like, they've used twice as much clock. Because we're, like, close to 15 minutes still, and they're at five. And with how this matchup has been, five minutes is not a lot to actually, for our opponent's act to actually win the game. I guess a quick row could do something, but we have blockers. Maybe, like, graveyard hate and a quick row. It could be worth bringing in, in the ley lines. Well, we'll see. Opponents taking their time during sideboarding. All right, opponent ran the clock to the very end. Well, here we go. Uh, we will play first. And, oh, oh, boy. Yeah, can't keep it. All right, well, this is fine. We will keep. We will put a overgrow tube to the bottom, and well, see what happens. Breeding pool tapped. Pass the turn. Up uh, it. Watery grave untapped. Thought seize. Yeah. So opponent gets to say grizzly salvage. We play blooming marsh. We grizzly salvage. Hope for some good luck. Um, well, we'll take a land. That's not the worst. We can haunt a dead back a prized amalgam if we want to. Opponent, tap land. Passes. We draw creeping chill. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Now, let's overgrown tomb. Untapped. Play in a row. Draw a card, gain some life. Overgrown tomb into play. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent, island, and has their own row. Back up to 19. Breeding pool, untapped. And traverse the Uvenwald for a land. Sure. Well, let's... Seder Wayfinder. Ooh, all right. All right, all right. That's not the worst. We miss on a land, but we get Narc Amoeba, which triggers our prized amalgams. And we get to Stitcher Supplier, which doesn't mill much anything. Well, pass the turn. Get back a prized amalgam. So we've built a bit of a board. Untap. Forest for our opponent. Another Uro. Draws a card, gains some life. 
We do want a blue source. That is the the painfulness of of whiffing on that Seder Wayfinder. We did really want a a blue source to be able to cast our own Uros. Donut Thought seizes. Seems like our opponent's trying to fill their graveyard for an Uro. Takes an Assassin's Trophy. And a Jace. Alright, so opponent's gonna be able to fill their graveyard. We untap. Secret Keeper. Well, go to combat. Attack our opponent. Opponent blocks. Takes their beats. We will creeping chill. Opponent down to eight. Get back silver smotes. All right, opponent. Seder Wayfinder mills some cards. So opponent gets to get back an Uro. Will it be enough? Mill some cards. I guess I could Jace Yehenny's expertise and hope that we just never, that we never draw a blue source. Flips Jace. Fable passage. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. Yehenny's expertise. Sweeps the board, Stitcher Supplier, mills some stuff. Well, we will. We will just... We did not draw a blue source still, unfortunately. We will haunt it dead. Trigger prize amalgam. Pass the turn. If we draw a blue source, we win the game. It's as simple as that. Like, a blue source is insane. It lets us get back Uro. It does everything. It gets back all of our silver spells, which there are many of, like... A blue source is just is just gay, preferably untapped, but that is what we need. Bow it. Uro. Draws a card, gains some life. Yeah, because we haven't found that man, whiffing on that Seder Wayfinder, there actually is a chance that loses us this game. Takes up Jace. Mastermind's tome. Well, we will go to combat. We will attack the Jace. Pass the turn. Opponent scries. Wow, if we lose because we can't find a blue source, oh leaves it on top. Oh no. Fabled Passage, cracks it, gets a Swamp, and then Emrakul? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ticks up, goes to combat. No attacks. Uro. Well, Uro's not bad. That does get back our Silver Smotes, pwn it. Attacks, attacks, blocks and blocks. So opponent's all in on winning with this Emrakul, I guess. So our stuff dies. Opponent's got one minute and seven, 16 seconds at the moment. Well, we will cast an Uro. Draw a card, gain some life. Watery Grave, untapped. Uro dies. We get back a million Silver Smotes, which will also get back a prize to Malga. Opponent, whoa, their clock bet went up. That is interesting. Our opponent's clock definitely added time to it, I'm pretty sure. Opponent casts us in Jace for Eliminate. Goes to Combat. Well, we will kill Uro. Opponent gets a land. Hits us. Down to 12. Uro returns. Draws a card, gains some life. We get back a prized amalgam. We go to combat. We attack our opponent. Opponent blocks. We Uro. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, did we just, I think we just punted. Wow. Yeah, we did just punt this game. Oh my goodness. We should have just blocked and went for the time win. By not blocking and going for the time win, we're going to let our opponent win this game. Opponent untaps. Draws a card. Combat. Attacks. Well, we will... Haunted dead. Get back our dorks. We block and block. Oh my goodness, we got it! Oh my goodness, we didn't punt it. Oh! We probably should have played defensively and went for the clock win. Wow! We go to one, and our opponent times out. What a long, ridiculous, grindy game. That was definitely the riskiest line we could take, for sure. I think... Uh, so I think that is the line I would have taken if our opponent was not timing out, but was not very good situational awareness to, to attack with everything and go to try to kill our opponent, when we probably could have just, like, chumped and chumped and tried to and tried to survive that way but uh well it worked out worked out worked out wow that was something well sweet 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 all right 
<laughs> Not true about nothing time. We are going for the <laughs> for the two one all the way through <laughs> longest ever five <laughs> zero in the history of Pioneer with a uh, with Dredge, which I've realized uh, Pioneer Dredge. So when you hear the name Pioneer Dredge. At least me. When I hear the name Pioneer Dredge, I think, okay, I'm going to do really, like, explosive things on the first few turns of the game and win. I don't actually think that's how this deck plays. That's what I'm realizing. This is more like a graveyard mid-range deck for the most part. Like, sometimes we get a silver smoke on turn two or something, but for the, it's not like modern Dredge where you're like, oh my god, I got 12 power on turn two and you just can't win the game if you don't have graveyard eight. Instead, we're getting, like, a bunch of power that keeps coming back and can, like, attack through blockers and so forth. Um, on turn six, turn five, most of the time. Plus, we get arrows for value. Uh, but we have we have somehow <laughs> crowned our way through this league uh, very slowly, very riskily. We've been, I mean, we could be 0-4 right now. I mean, two ones, uh, that's probably an exaggeration. I think some of those were not as close as it looks. But uh, it, has been, it has been quite the league. Well, I mean, let's see if we can finish it off. All right. On to round five, we are on the draw, and ah, these are the, the awkward hands with the deck. I mean, I think we're going to keep it. I think we're going to keep it. So the bad news is we have three things we'd rather have in our graveyard or our deck. Good news is we do have two things that fill our graveyard, and I think that's enough. I mean, and Prize Amalgam isn't the end of the world. Like, casting it is a 3-3 three, three for three. I guess the same is true. Well, yeah, you never really want to cast an Arch Amoeba. <laughs> or, I mean, Creepy Chill does have some value when you cast it, if you have a bunch of Silver Smokes in the graveyard, but uh, not exciting to cast these two. Prize Amalgam's fine, and these two are good. Plus, we got two lands, so eh, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. See what happens. Port Town for our opponent. Ooh. So maybe it could be some sort of Boggle stack. I guess it could be some sort of, like, I was going to say Spirits, but I don't think Spirits can play Luris. Probably some sort of Boggle stack. All right, mill some cards. I don't think we've cast a single Driven to Despair this entire league, but maybe this is finally the time. Untap land for our opponent. And Sram. All right, that is scary. Well, Watery Grave, untapped. Grizzly Salvage. Oh, no! Whiff on lands. That is awkward. Uh, well, pass the turn. Yeah, whiffing on lands there is pretty bad. We did hit two prized amalgams, but we really wanted to land... I mean, our opponent can potentially just go to town with a Sram and kill us? Yeah, cartouche. We don't really have a way to kill this Sram in our main deck. We have some sideboard, some sideboard removal, but main deck we don't. Oh, yeah, we really want to land there. I guess the big question is going to be, can our opponent, um, can our opponent give it flying? Ooh, opponent's going to attack? All right, we will block. More cards in the graveyard is good for us. Stitcher, Supplier, Mills... Lands that we wanted. All right, plays a land. And all that glitters. We draw a Creeping Chill that we definitely didn't want. Well, Stitcher Supplier hit another Creeping Chill. Oh, did we hit a Silver Smelt? We did. Okay, that's that's better. Stitcher Supplier. Well, okay. That was not insane, but it was helpful. So we get back Silver Smelt, which gets back two prized amalgams on our opponent's end step. Sram's tough if you can't kill it. It just kind of goes off. Opponents growing the door, strong cards, doing Sram stuff, and Griff's Boon. Yeah. Well, that's a very fast clock. Port Town. Tapped. Opponent. Oh, man, hitting some Narcomoebas to block this fire would help in the short term. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Yeah. Down to 14. Here comes our prized amalgams. Yeah, what do we find? All right, there's a land. So Botanical Sanctum. Boy, I'm very tempted to... Like, we could Driven to Despair. Empty our opponent's hand? I think that's worth it. But then they can lure us it back anyway. Well, they have to spend three mana. All right, let's, let's go for it. Despair. Go to combat. One, two, three, four. The opponent can block one of them? All right, yep. Empty your hand. Opponent blocks, and blocks. Kills a prized amalgam. All right, kills a silver smoke. Well, so now we empty our opponent's hand, and we hope that they don't chain together auras. Might have been better to attack with a prized amalgam and leave back Stitcher's supplier, actually. All right, opponent kills a silver smoke. Yeah, that probably would have been better. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of cost ourselves some damage. Eh. 
Yeah, not that might not have been the wisest attack. Uh oh. Oh, okay, that's fine. Sure. Opponents casting Karametra's blessing, cause why not? We make our opponent discard their hand and see what happens. Opponents hit ten. Goes to combat. Hits us. Hits us. Well, we will block Sram for now. Drop to seven. Opponent. All right, gets Lurus for next turn. The thing get down that sta staggering insight. That's real bad. And a land. Okay. Well, that means staggering insight does come next turn. I think that probably kills us because they're gonna have two flyers and one's gonna have. Uh, they're gonna have a huge life linker. Hmm. How do we beat that? Is it possible? Well, play blooming marsh. And I think we just gotta pass for now. This lifelink is a huge issue, though. This is going to be, like, gaining nine a turn, and I'm not sure we can race that. Oh. Our opponent plays Elsid, goes to combat, attacks. Well, we will discard Prize Amalgam and Uro. Get back onto dead. This actually does keep us alive, because if our opponent goes pro-white, they lose all their auras. So Haunted Dead buys us a turn. Is there any way that leads to us winning, though? What could we draw that would let us win? So Haunted Dead, we get the Spirit. We get to Chump. Here comes Loris and Favorite Hoplite. Ugh, yeah. Wow, no Favorite Hoplite, interesting. Well, we get back two prized amalgams. We untap. We draw Silver Smote. We go to combat. We, <sighs> all right, any way we get out of this. We can get back Uro, but we can't block this Flyer, which is going to be 10 power. And I think we just got to attack with everything. Like, I think our only way of winning is our opponent somehow punning, because this is going to be lethal next turn. Opponent blocks, opponent blocks, opponent blocks. Ooh, okay. So that gets rid of Lurus. I don't think that keeps us alive, though, unfortunately. I think we still die in the backswing. So opponent does block in a way that is going to save them. Saves Lurus. Stuff dies. Yeah, so now we're just... We can get back Uro, but our prized amalgams are tapped, and we die. All right. Well, yeah, that's that's tough. Um, not having any removal against this ROM deck is definitely... And Loris, to a lesser extent, but also... Like, just having those, uh, those permanents be able to run wild, definitely tough. Tough, tough. Uh, all right, so we're going to go down Driven to Despair's... Go up Assassin's Trophies and Fatal Pushes, because I think our opponent could also have could also have some uh some graveyard hate. And I guess we'll like just do some trimming. Trim, 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 trim. Actually, maybe we go down a haunted Well, I kinda like Haunted Dead. Well, alright, go down one Haunted Dead. Let's try it like that. Alright! Alright, alright. So we just gotta win two in a row for the 5-0. That's it. That's all we need. Ugh, yeah, this actually feels like a, a relatively hard matchup, just because we don't have that removal available. All right, we're on the play, which is good. Uh, you know what? I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna keep this. We do need to hit a land, but as long as we hit a single land, this hand is actually pretty excellent. Minus not having removal, we just have all graveyard fillers. Well, there goes two lands. Oh, come on, deck. Come on, deck. Give us that land. Be good. Favorite hoplite for our opponent. Land. Oh, not a land. All right, Stitcher Supplier, Mills. Oh, two more lands and nothing. Oh, no. No. Oh, we're milling lands way more frequently than math would suggest. Pony has Griff Spoon. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We might be getting punished. Ponet hits us. We can't block, unfortunately. We drop two. Fifteen. Ponet passes. Well, there's a painful land, but it is a land. We will play a... Seder Wayfinder middle some cards. Get a land. Uro, prized amalgam, silver smoke. The graveyard action is adding up. Well, go attacking. But we're down to 13 and we don't have a way to stop this favorite hopolite again. Opponent hits us. Or we hit our opponent. Now our opponent hits us. Land. We could be dead as soon as this turn. Oh boy. Ethereal armor. Favorite hopolite, 6-6. Six, six. And game. Ethereal armor. Favorite Hoplite, 11-11, and, well, okay, so we just have to win the game that, oh, Karametra's Blessing, all right, wow, oh, well, we could not finish off the 5-0, 
Boy, that feels like a really bad matchup for our deck. That feels that feels pretty close to unwinnable. On the other end, we did go forward wood with with Pioneer Dredge. Ay 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 ay. Oh, the 5-0 would have been sweet. I guess the good news is we get a bunch of treasure chests to open. And it was still a, it was still a good performance overall. Well, alright. Chest one. What do you get? Deflecting SWAT. Yeah, they added a bunch of uh a bunch of commander cards to the treasure chest because they were ridiculously hard to get and ridiculously expensive. Deflecting SWAT is actually still six uh six dollars, so good open. Not a Muxus. Muxus is, I think, the big winner still out of the like new supplemental product cards. Fire Mountains, Burning Tree Shaman, sometimes, very rarely sees play, some play points. Used to see a bit more play. Oh my goodness, Force of Will. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that has value. Force of, even with the Reaper Egg, Eternal Master's Force of Will, 24 ticks. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that is a big win as far as uh, <laughs> treasure chest opens. All right, uh, so far so good. Deflecty Swap and a Force of Will. Good chess. All right, two more to go. Two more to go. Come on. More goodies. Uh, or a Moldile Channelers. And I like these lands from Battle Bond. Some of them especially, but I wish they had old borders. Well, last one. Can we top our Force of Will somehow? Uh, <laughs> Mothra's Great Cocoon. A pretty sweet looking forest. Uh, and Unbreathing Horde, which... If you ever think about playing on Breathing Horde, it's probably a lot worse than you think. <laughs> I've had that experience several times with Breathing Horde. Like, well, that's probably going to be really good in my zombie deck. Nope. No, it isn't. You get the, the narrator's voice comes in, <laughs> corrects you. Uh, well, we can't really complain because Force of Will and Deflecting Swat, our treasure chest would have sold for like 15 ticks. Just those two cards are almost 30 ticks, over 30 ticks. And we get our play points and some other random jank. So, well, that was a pretty good league. And, I mean... Wrap up wise, let's uh, let's just. Uh, I don't think there's a ton to say about the deck, honestly. Like, uh, let's do the wrap up right here. Let's just let's just talk about it right now. So, as far as the deck, the big thing I learned is, which I mentioned going into the finals, uh, it's not like modern dredge or legacy dredge where you're going to win the game really quickly. It's much more of like a mid-range deck where you start doing powerful stuff once you can escape Uro on turn four, or even later sometimes, turn five, turn six. And then the value of this deck and what makes it good is you have this like recursive engine that's really hard to beat. Plus you can like mill creeping chills to finish out the game so you have some reach. But once you get to like turn four, turn five, turn six, you're just like, okay, get back a bunch of prized amalgams and silver smotes from an Uro, attack you with everything. Sure, you kill some of our stuff next turn, do it again, get it all back again, attack you again. And eventually you just eat your opponent's life total away. Uh, so I think that's the upside of the deck. I think the name is actually kind of deceiving, I would say. Like, Pioneer Dredge is probably the correct name for it. Because it is, like, filling the graveyard and there's some similarities. But when you hear Dredge, I think of, like, these crazy fast nut draws. Where you, like, have a huge board on turn three. Or turn two even. And you just run your opponent over. That doesn't have... I think our best start was, like, Secret Keeper milling a Creeping Chill and a, and a Silver Smoke. And we had a 3-1 on turn two or something. That was, like, our nut draw in this deck. So, it's not like... It's not like Modern Dragon your legacy dredge the upside is it's really good at going long if you can dodge the graveyard hate or answer the graveyard hate you can just grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and keep getting your stuff back forever which makes it really resilient to removal removal is like a joke against the deck sweepers are like a joke against the deck so then you just grind the opponent out uh, so as far as the deck, that was my biggest takeaway. It obviously feels good. We went forward one, ran into a pretty tough matchup in the finals, got run over by Saram. That's going to happen. Saram against decks that play zero main deck removal. That is uh, that is what Saram dreams of. The way Saram loses is removal heavy decks that keep Saram off the battlefield. Uh, if you're not playing removal, Saram is having a field day over there. So that's what we kind of saw the in the last round. On the other hand, more importantly... Pioneer felt really good. We played five different rounds. We didn't play any degenerate combo decks. Probably the most degenerate thing we saw was Strom going off, and that's partly our fault for not having removal in our deck. Uh, but we didn't play any, like, combo decks, which used to be most of the Pioneer meta, half of the meta or something. So I feel like Pioneer's in a really good place right now. Five rounds, five different decks, a lot of really interesting matches, like close, crazy, different things going on type of matches. So Pioneer's in a good place. The deck feels good. Just watch out for those throbs. Anyway, that's been our bunch of brew for this week.
Pioneer Dredge. Although, again, maybe we got to find a better name for this deck. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.